Well, we have had maybe one of the wildest days and or weeks in the history of Tesla. And so who better to make us all smarter about what happened, especially what happened today, <laughs> than Bradford Ferguson. Hey, Bradford, glad to have you on board. Yeah, good to be here. So um, I woke up this morning, I did my show, I said, okay, we're sitting at uh, almost 71 here, uh, 271. Um, gosh, that's really high. If we going to be another update, right? It's going to be another update. If we close above 265, then we might start making an attack on, to thir on 300. But if we don't close above 265, there's an awful good chance we could have a 20 to 30% downside. <laughs> well, I hadn't already got the words. I had already published it. <laughs> and all of a sudden we had this collapse. So I have made some uh, statements on other channels in the uh, rest of today. Let's hear what you think triggered at least the downside or what do you think contributed to it? Was it all about the 8-8 eight, eight problem or what do you think is going on? Uh, I think mostly is about the the robo taxi event being delayed. Um, however, uh, we were warning about FOMO and Tesla stock, uh, given the huge rally it had seen off the bottom from April 22nd until uh, earlier today. Uh, it was up over 90% um, from the lows in, the, in over 77 days or so. And typically when that's happened in the past, the last three times, um, it, it, it's gone up uh, 90 to 120%. And then it's the last three times it's had these 30% uh, pullbacks. Yeah. So we thought things were getting frothy and just the way people were talking about Tesla stock uh, made us think that uh, people were just getting overly excited and euphoric. People are talking about uh, $400 a share, $500 a share. It's really... Um, doing a 180 on the sentiment even even ross gerber for a couple of days uh said nice things about tesla <laughs> until today it didn't last long so so i my speculation was that the that the, the a whole bunch of folks were just waiting for an opportunity to take profits they were looking for the top they're trying to guess uh as soon as the 88 announcement came out the the fact that 88 might the rumor that it might be put off, that it's triggered a, a beginning of a sell-off, and that probably a whole bunch of people just said, okay, I'm grabbing mine now, um, and that just exacerbated things. But then there was a second round. Things had dropped down to something under 250, 244, something, and then all of a sudden we had another collapse. And I wondered whether that might have just been um, participation in what looked like maybe some kind of a, a Another problem, which I've been talking about for three, not three months, probably been a little over a month, which is the uh, Magnificent Six being too frothy and mm -hmm. they needed a trimming. Um, I recommended that might be five to 20 percent. Um, and all of a sudden we got about two percent of that today, I think. And then Tesla continued down. So uh, are you with me on that or what do you think? Yeah, we finally got inflation numbers that we wanted to see, and the market was down on the same day, uh, which is just really crazy. Uh, yeah, the the tech heavy triple Q, uh, so the Nasdaq was down two point two percent today, and the um, mid cap and small cap heavy index, which is a Russell two thousand, was up uh, three point six percent. Three point six. Yeah, that's a 5.8% difference in one day between two very broadly diversified uh, index funds. Um, so that's really shocking to see. Um, we just posted it today. I just did it two days ago where uh, I talked about the narrow market where the Magnificent Six had been driving uh, the market 85% of the gains. Oh. Uh, of the S&P 500 had come from the Magnificent Six over the past uh, five quarters um, through the end of March. And um, we're, we're at like record levels for the outperformance of uh, S&P 500 versus small caps or equally weighted um, baskets of stocks versus market cap weighted baskets. Um, so it really gotten out of hand. So today, um, 
we saw quite a bit of um, you know small caps and mid caps bouncing back. Uh, maybe it's a short covering rally, but it'll be interesting to see what happens from here. Yeah. So uh, one of the other things I've been wondering what in the world was happening, and I've talked about it a lot on the show, is you kind of expect a rotation at some point. You you kind of expect the value stocks to get in there someday. Uh, the uh, the the uh, guys that are paying dividends and whatnot, uh, as opposed to these high flying uh, tech stocks. And there just wasn't a rotation and wasn't a rotation and wasn't a rotation. And so I, I guess I called it about five months early. <laughs> but having said that, one day does not, one day's a data point does not a, a, a change right. make. So <laughs> I would not anticipate that necessarily this is a rotation. I could just as easily see Tesla springing back tomorrow, the next day on some other piece of news or no news. Mm -hmm. um, I could just as easily see the Magnificent Six maybe moving back up, um, you know, uh, because we've got, you know, no reason to think that the fundamentals have changed. Uh, but I could also see a continuation down to that five or 10% um, pullback that I've been talking about. And again, the Magnificent Six is Apple, Amazon, uh, Google, uh, Meta, Microsoft, and NVIDIA. And then, then there's Tesla, which was in the Mag 7. They kicked out, and then they brought it back because Tesla did so well <laughs> uh, over uh, since uh, April 22nd. Yeah, it, it feels like an earthquake today. I'm, I'm curious to see what the aftershocks look like. Yeah, it will be, will be interesting. So um, in the course of all of that, of course, we did have these amazing um, uh, uh, inflation numbers. Uh, we had one, I forget which wh what his name is, uh, one of the members of the uh, Fed today saying they're ready to switch sides. They're ready to say, OK, for uh, starting to uh, reduce the rates. Um, but another one saying, no, I think I think we're still OK. You know, these rates. So um, any, do you, you know, uh, I have this problem when 90 percent of everybody that's asked um, says that it's going to go uh, down in September. That probably means it isn't. Um, what do you think? Do you think this is now enough or do you think they need to see the PCE, the next uh, employment numbers, et cetera, in order to make that decision? Call me a cynic, but I think the Fed's going to wait until we're in recession to cut rates. <laughs> would that be, would a 4.2 or 4.3 unemployment rate be enough for you? Do you think that would do it? Yeah, I, I don't know what's going to do it for them. They They said some of the comments that um, Powell said a couple of days ago was that the economy was still on like a sure footing or something like that. Um, you know, they have a lot of data. They, they survey a lot of businesses, a lot of leaders uh, throughout the country. And um, just in general, the Fed's going to be too late. Um, so I, I'm guessing they're going to overstay their welcome and, um, Early on, I was I was thinking that they wouldn't cut um, by June. Um, I think September is a little too early. Okay, so we're you and I are uh, lined up for the November as being the first cut. Okay, I thought they would have no cuts this year, but now I'm I'm just hearing I don't know what they're hearing. They're talking to the wrong people. I really think third quarter is going to be a negative GDP print. Mm. Maybe the second quarter also, but probably we won't learn that until the second or third revision. <laughs> yeah. So something like that might be uh, in the offing. We just posted a, a video to our website about some recession indicators uh, having to do with unemployment, um, also with part-time jobs or with full-time jobs. So full-time jobs over last year have lost, uh, been a net loser, yeah. and part-time jobs have been the, the full amount of the gain um, in the last year. And that's not a positive. Not a positive. No, one wouldn't say so. Uh, okay. So that kind of, uh, then I hope maybe helps people try to at least hear from two people, what, what we think happened today and what might be, you know, coming, uh, in the future. Uh, I guess I could ask you, do you think the eight, eight day, okay, let me give you my theory. See what you think about. My okay. I think that Elon, uh, was caught flat-footed that there was discussions somewhere in the Tesla world, it, you know, behind closed doors, 
that there may have been discussions about delaying it, that maybe that wasn't a final decision. Maybe it was, maybe it was getting close to a final decision. And then it got leaked. And I think the reason Elon hasn't said anything yet is I think that they had this meeting and they were like, okay, listen, we're faced with this. Are we going to spend, you know, 18 hour days until 8, 8 to make sure we get what we want done? Or are we going to delay it? What do you think about my theory? Yeah, so, you know, I, I was starting to second guess and wonder, you know, why are they even having the event? And I, I think the purpose of the event is mainly for consumers, for for consumers to see uh, what the robot taxi will look like. I think it'll look cool. People want to get into it, be pictured getting into it. They'll want to try it out. They'll be curious about it. Also, showing the app to consumers, I think, is is valuable for Tesla to do that. Right. Um, so, you know, possibly they want more prototypes to be able to drive people around on 8.8, and they don't have enough prototypes yet. Um, that was an, an excuse that Bloomberg gave. Uh, maybe they also want to put together a van uh, <laughs> or <laughs> something that's going to go through the boring tunnels. Uh -huh. um, and show that off on 8.8 as well. And they just need time to get that ready and get it looking good and get it uh, functioning. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, maybe those are some possibilities. And I think what was going on with the stock is there was this initial reaction and the stock was down six to 7%. And I think people are waiting for Elon to respond, you know, sometime during the day or maybe maybe even after once the market closed. Um, and we haven't seen Elon uh, respond to this yet. Um, yeah. Do you but, think, okay, go ahead. Do you, do you think there could have been an overlay also of the uh, reviews right now on 12.4.3 are not super great? Could that have been also in the minds at least of some of the folks that pay really close attention and thinking, well, maybe the reason for the delay is actually that they wanna move it back a bit on having uh, FSD really, really solid by the by the event date. Yeah, so I just got 12.4.3 last night and I've tried it out today. I know I, I'm a small sample size. Um, in some ways it's worse than 12.3.6 Six. Six that I had. Um, and some ways it's better. It's it's more cautious. I thought it would have fewer safety critical interventions, but I, I personally already had two in, in about 50 miles. Mm -hmm. And I'm here in uh, Carmel, Indiana, the home of Roundabout. Um, I think it it is, it, it might be possible that they're waiting for 12.5 mm -hmm. to have the, the robo taxi event then they could also claim that you know hopefully with 12.5 they would be bringing self-driving to the cyber truck as well oh, yes. uh, which, which would be a huge step that you know early cyber truck owners are looking for okay all right okay well listen we also believed we still believe i still believe that a big reason for the run-up was the recognition by the world uh, the, the the folks that have got the blinders on that uh, energy is a thing, yeah. <laughs> energy storage is a thing, and of course you are the energy storage maven. You are the one who uh, uh, has uh, more than anybody else carried the water uh, for the last uh, fifteen months or so. What uh, what you, you said? You have some updates or some thoughts with regard to energy storage for me today. Though I will say, uh, Larry Goldberg's uh, taking the mantle from me and some of his analysis. Um, so what we saw with the production and delivery report on uh, July 2nd was that Tesla had this massive jump from about four gigawatt hours to close to 10 gigawatt hours of energy storage deployed. Right. Now, um, we're not going to see the, the, fin the financials of that fully hit this quarter, but a good, uh, a good majority of it will. Sure. Um, and it's generally going to be at higher pricing than what the current prices are. Mm -hmm. So the prices on Megapack 2XL have declined by about uh, a third mm -hmm. since um, a few months ago. So these, these Megapacks that were deployed this quarter, 
um, were likely subject to the earlier pricing. Right. Um, now, I think where there's a point of confusion is that deployed doesn't mean that they get to fully recognize all the financials. Uh, deployed means that, the, in, my, in our opinion, our research, deployed means the mega pack is on site, um, that Tesla's done the construction to uh, hook it all up, but it's not you know, fully energized to the grid, it not fully turned on. Uh, once that happens and Tesla is able to recognize uh, nearly all of the revenue, unless there are certain performance obligations for it. Um, so I think that's where we're at. We'll, we'll see, a, I believe we'll see a meaningful uplift in, in the earnings um, from the energy division and the conversation will change around it. So I, I believe a, a good portion of the move that Tesla made was well-deserved based off of these fundamentals. But then another portion of it was driven by the FOMO that we're seeing.